Hi! Today the video started in a slightly different way, but I will go back to that in a moment. I just wanted to make something a little different and it will make sense, I hope, in a, in a few moments. So, first I want to show you today the pens that I will be using in this video. And these pens are this Mont Blanc, yes, this is a Mont Blanc pen, a school pen. It is a Mont Blanc Junior 622 in this turquoise color with Schiffer turquoise ink. And the other pen that I'll be using is this, one of my favorite pens ever. And this is the Parker 100 in smoke bronze. And it has the Parker Queen black. And let me see if this pen is too wet for this paper though. No. Oh, or no, two pages. Maybe a little wet, too wet. You can see some ghosting on the other side. Okay. Doesn't matter. These are the two pens for today. And right now we will go back for the typewriter part. So, the idea for this part of the video, it actually was meant to be a full video, but then I realized I don't have enough to say about it. Um, so I put it in these Friday Night Pen Thoughts. I think it was clever to do that. Um, this, this part of the video came from an idea that I got an inspiration uh, from a video by Woski Squirrel in which he shows his Smith Corona um, and in, this, in that video he says he was inspired by another YouTuber, um, the Adventure Denali. So this is fun because we keep giving um, ideas for all of us. So this is an interesting uh, typewriter that I wanted to show you. It is in quite a bad shape in some places. It is all rusty in this side. And it's it's a very it's an old and very used um, typewriter. Here you can see all the internal parts. And this let me put this. Okay, uh, this typewriter uh, is from this brand, Optima, and this is Optima Elite T3 from the 1960 or 1961. This is a German brand from Eastern Germany. Actually, this is kind of, it looks like a copy of other brand that was called Olympia. And Olympia was a German brand. It was, the factory was in Berlin. And after the World War II, when the Allied forces went into Berlin and they freed Berlin, um, this factory got under Soviet administration and they changed the name from Olympia to Optima but some of the workers of this Olympia brand were able to escape to the West Germany and resume the production of Olympia. So there were two brands producing almost the same models with the same names, one in uh, Western Germany and the other one on Eastern Germany. So Optima and the Olympia. This is an interesting thing and um, as far as I could research it was the 
international court of The Hague that uh, determined that the two brands could coexist making the same products in two different uh, parts of the country. So, why is this special and why did I want to bring this? I never owned a typing machine or a typewriting. Uh, in Portuguese we say typing machine, that is how we translate it, so I got that. But uh, I never owned my own typewriter. Um, it, it was not just for my time, but this typewriter was from my uh, grandfather, the one that had this Parker 51 that I showed you lots of times. And this typewriter was kind of the reason why the love for revising text and editing text is, was born uh, in me. And it, 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 it was born because the, my grandfather used this typewriter a lot, all the time, to, writing, to write letters and stuff. And because during the 20th century, Portuguese language um, suffered a lot of changes, of orthographic changes, um, he often asked me if they were the, the, the orthography that he used was the most up-to-date, because I was in school, so I could uh, know better the current orthography. And so he asked me that, and I used to do that. And since then, I like to check texts, texts and um, review texts and so on. The keyboard, the interesting part of this pen is that it has the Portuguese key, uh, layout or the Portuguese keyboard layout, and this is an interesting part. And this keyboard was called a gas Cesar. And we have to, if we say that in English, it is age Caesar, because it's there. The fun part is that my grandfather was called, first name was Caesar, or Cesar in Portuguese. It has an accent on the E. So it is, he was called Cesar. And I'm also called Paul Cesar. So, it was fun because if we forget about this age, to type our name is just C-E-S-A-R. So, it is quite fun. This keyboard layout is a specific Portuguese layout that was created by this law. It was a decree from July the 17th, 1937, and in this, um, in this decree, they created this layout. So, this was how the keyboards, the Portuguese keyboards, should be. And this is an interesting stuff. So, what you have here is a different keyboard that was adapted to the most commonly used uh, uh, letters in, uh, in Portugal and in Portuguese language and it has the kind of accents that we use and this was used since the 1937 and then it was replaced in the 70s by the Azerty uh, A-Z-E-R-T-Y uh, which is kind of a French language standard um, keyboard layout. And later in the 1980s, um, with the computers, it changed to the current uh, QWERTY uh, layout that we all know. And this is the problem. That's why in the introduction of this video, I tried to type these then the Friday night uh, pen thoughts and I couldn't find the keys because everything is out of place and I cannot write quickly in this. It takes some practice because we are used to 
layout and this is a different one. Also, if you saw the beginning of the video when I typed, I didn't type number four with that cardinal uh, symbol because there is no cardinal symbol. To do that in this type machine, I can uh, in this typewriter, I cannot do that. It's quite uh, difficult for my abilities. Um, it's done by using the equal sign and then doing a backspace and then this bar and then just doing a partial backspace and then putting the bar again. So we have the equal sign and then to um, two slashes uh, on top of it to make the cardinal symbol. So it was quite uh, interesting. So this is the, the, the typewriter that I wanted to show you. I think it wouldn't make sense to make a full video for it but I think it makes sense in these Friday night pen thoughts. So let's go back to the notebook. And now we are back and we'll see the next topic. As usual, I have my topics written here in Portuguese in this side and I will go through them. There's not much written here, but I'm afraid this can be a little bit longer because of this typewriter insert that I put here, but let's see. So, uh, first thing I want to talk to you about is something that I do in the other videos of these Friday Night Pen Thoughts, is the pens that I recently got. And this week we have two pens, one fountain pen and one ballpoint pen. Let's put these little pens aside and I will show you. One of the pens that I got was this one and this is a Pilot Costume 67. It is the, the pen that gave origin a few years later to the Pilot Costume 74. And it is interesting, it is the same pen as the 74, but it has one major difference, which is the two cap bands there, instead of a very broad cap band. And I like these better, because it looks older. And the other one has a ring around here, I guess, and this one doesn't. So it's a very simple black pen with a gold nib and gold nibs on pilots are always fine. This is a medium, but I'm talking fine as good. And this pen has a very soft nib, not a flex nib, but it's very soft. And if you press it harder, you can really have some line variation. So this is a very fun nib to write with. I'm happy with the pen. I'm just not sure that this kind of uh, bounciness of a nib is my kind of thing. Let me check. Yes, some bleed through with this pen. By the way, it has inside Caveco Caramel Brown. The other pen that I got, I shared it on Instagram and I think here also on YouTube, on the community tab, was a pen that came inside this box. So, as I told you before, I went to that stationery store that had the Lamy Safari and I thought they had the green one but no, they had the orange uh, or the red and the terracotta red and I got this old box so the box is a little bit damaged it was in the store for 40 years now, oh, crazy, uh, 40 years and there were some floods on the store and so on, so this is a little bit destroyed, but I got this. It also has these instructions here on the underside. And I got the box that is has these little tabs that close it a little bit broken, so there is the missing part. And I got it, but it is a ballpoint pen, not a fountain pen, but I thought 
it would be useful for some color comparison and then I guess I will sell the box and the pen and the, this ballpoint pen if someone wants to buy it. So you can see there West Germany and it is interesting because the modern ones are not West Germany and I have here uh, the 2021 edition and you can see it may be a little lighter than the 1980 edition so this was an interesting thing uh, and I had to get to get it just for fun I know but I think the box is quite nice okay next uh, thing that I want to talk to you about is also the most recent videos that I made of course I made the video of the unboxing of the pilot costume 67 and I also made the Caveco Brass Sport review and also the Pelican Signum P520 review that was chosen by you on the comments of this video of last week and now we have to talk about the videos of next week so the next videos I'm not sure if I will be able to, rec to, rec to record the video and post it tomorrow sometimes making videos is quite heavy I'm not sure so I will not force it um, but I want to make the video of the pens I got from March so pens from March 2021 maybe tomorrow or maybe some other day also I have to make the video of the pens for April that kind of long video where I'll show you all the pens that I have with ink and it is usually I think it's quite a successful video because people just like to see that and I think those people that like to hear my videos just for <laughs> a better night of sleep they may want that and also, I want to make, uh, to publish a review and that I have to ask you for your help if I have the time to post it, but I have three options. And the three options for the next review, they are already recorded, so I will not have any big extra work. I need to make the thumbnail and the video description but just that one is this one let's put it here so this is the Caveco AL Sport Silver or this one and this is let me try to write over the pen this is the Ving Sung 6 70 in yellow another kind of Parker du Fold style pen and the other pen is this little thing with the retractable nib and this is the Bina Magic so uh, I will ask you to vote on these options and tell me which you which of these reviews do you prefer to watch they are all pre-recorded and I just want to know which one I will post so that's it now let's take this away and let's go for the next topic which is the uncommon pen of the day and that pen is a Stepan pen and Stepan is a brand from France that no longer exists it was bought by Bic and Stepan was my first fountain pen ever it was given to me by my parents when I was in school and it is a nice pen and I like it and I don't like it at the same time because I didn't think this was... I think this was a little bit uh, maybe girlish although the dots are blue but 
At that time, I didn't like that so much. There is my, there is a P that can go for Paulo there. So it was fun. And I like to look at this pen as a, as a pen that was my first fountain pen ever. It is a cartridge converter. It takes international size cartridge. It is a plastic pen and it has there let me show you if I can. The nib tines are the the tip of the nib is not. Um, what I want to say is the nib is not tipped with those iridium. Let's call it iridium. Uh, we know it's not, but it's not tipped. It's just uh, you have the the two tines like these, and the end of the nib are just twist it like that and make the point. Although it is quite smooth on the paper, now it has no ink so I cannot show you, but it is an interesting pen in that way. So, at the same time I felt embarrassed for having this pen at the time, but at some other... in another way I thought I was getting quite important because I could use finally a fountain pen and I like that a lot. I I have been a fan of fountain pens for a long time and this was my first and I was very happy to receive it although I didn't like the color scheme that much. Today it is a souvenir that I keep uh, and I like to have it and I wanted to show you. So it is uncommon because I don't think you will see many dotted pens around there Stipen is no longer around, so you may find some old stock, but it's not that common. And it also has a P, so I'm not, I don't know if you will find this pen, and this was why I call it uncommon. And it's not only uncommon, it's very personal to me, and I think it makes sense for me to show this kind of personal stuff here in this. Friday night videos. Now, because the video is quite long already because of the typewriter, we'll go for the final two topics that I want to address today. And the topics for today are, and that's what I want you to answer if you, if you want. Um, is what or which is your favorite pen material and this is something that sometimes I, I think about uh, what do you prefer to use there are lots of different options um, and some of them are even hard to describe what they are, but there are many different preferences also for different people. And so that is something that I want to ask you. And starting at one place, uh, at one point, I would like to ask you which kind of material do you prefer? And I have four or five main options, but there may be more, I don't know. One of those is this one. Do you like, do you prefer ebonite pens? This is a Indian pen with no brand and this is a, a Parker DQ, which is a very beautiful slim pen with that kind of Parker engraving. I cannot show it to you in this lighting. Uh, so, Ebonite or do you prefer celluloid? And for celluloid, for examples, I have here this beautiful, I love this material. Caveco Special or 
a Parker do fold this old style with stripes which is really really nice or maybe you prefer resins or plastic and I have here another Parker do fold this is a mosaic blue limited edition or even this other plastic that I showed you last week and I'm in love with this pen this is the Leonardo Pura in orange or arancho or do you even prefer metal like this copper shone design which is a, an interesting pocket pen or maybe this one made of titanium which is the Parker T1 with this beautiful amazing nib or maybe you prefer wood like this very beautiful Penteo Samurai Ironwood or even a Montegrappa Fortuna Hardwood Walnut so maybe there are other materials like Micarta but Micarta where does it fall uh, there are other products like I don't know um, casein but it's a kind of a plastic so please feel free to let me know which kind of material is your favorite because this is something that sometimes I think about and I would say that nowadays but it is just my and uh, I have uh, it, it's a non-evidence-based opinion. Uh, I would say that people nowadays are crazy about, about celluloid pens. So I would say celluloid may be the most um, wanted pen material, but I'm not sure. So if you want to take some time to answer this question, I would really thank you because I'm interested to see that maybe I should make a formal survey about that that I'm really interested in this kind of thing because I don't know which is my kind of favorite material I'm not sure it depends on the pen that I am using um, and what I am using the pen for if I had to say without thinking maybe I would say uh, resin or plastic but there are some metal pens that I love there are some wood pens that I love very hard to say and now let's go for the last topic and the last topic for today is quite difficult to describe is about pen character okay pens are not people but sometimes pens have a specific character to them that makes them special or unique or make them or they make them to have special characteristics that we may or may not like and my question is should we adapt to a pen or should we do the opposite we have a very clear option if we don't want a specific pen that has a specific uh, property we can choose not to buy it but if we have the pen if we, we didn't know and we just bought the pen and then we find that characteristic what should we do we should adapt to the pen and accept that the pen has a specific character or should we try to change or want to change the pen to our preferences for example one of the pens that i think about that is this one this is a parker 45 it is a pen that i like a lot especially the flighter version they usually have this they have this uh, small nib and this small nib usually has a very small sweet spot which means it's not that the pen is not smooth outside that sweet spot it 
usually means that you need to uh, find that sweet spot and to touch with that specific part of the nib on the paper to make it right. If you just take it off a little bit, it starts skipping and it, it's maybe scratch and it is a mess. But in that sweet spot, it writes perfectly. So, what should we do? We don't like that sweet spot and we should grind or polish the nib just to have a bigger sweet spot or we should adapt to that. What should we do? The other thing, another example of that is for example the Sailor. This is a king of pen, but we don't need to think of the most expensive Sailor. Uh, it could be any. Uh, Sailor pens have a very specific feedback. If you didn't know that Sailor had feedback and you bought a Sailor, you could um, complain and say, oh, I didn't like my purchase. But if you did know it had feedback, does it make sense for you to buy a pen that you know that has a characteristic that you don't like, for example, and you try to change? Makes sense to smooth the nib of a Sailor because it's their personality. It's their character. A sailor nib has lots of feedback. If we want a pen from the same size, from the same price, with a big nib, maybe we can go for a Mont Blanc 149 and it has a smoother nib. So, how should we do? Should we change the pen or we should accept the pen as it is. The other example of this, it's very clear, there, there is a lot of complaints about that, is the pilot. Many people say that the clip of the pilot get the pilot capless or VP in the United States gets in the way and they don't find the comfortable way to write with it. For me, it, will, it is never a problem. I usually get very well adapted to different styles of gripping the pens, but some people complain a lot. There is someone on, on Facebook that I saw that removes the nibs, the, sorry, the clips of the, the couplers, because people don't like to write with that. But if you don't like that, why do you buy a pilot couplers? You can say, okay, because it has these. I understand that, but you can have... Let me dialogue. I'm not sure. What should we do? We should buy a pen and change it to our taste? I'm not sure of that. I usually tend to respect the characteristics of the pens, but you may want to do that because after all it is your pen. If you want, you can do whatever you want with that, with it. So it's really your choice. But what do you think we should do? other thing that people talk about, there are people that need to post every pen and of course not every pen is made to be posted. This is a pilot, uh, sorry, this is a seller pocket pen and it is meant to be posted because like this it is too small, if you post it, it per posts perfectly and it becomes a full sized, even a big size pen. So it is meant to be posted makes sense, but some people I don't know if they are afraid of losing their caps and I think I think I see that kind of characteristic more on um, viewers or people from the United States, but I don't want to be unfair, it's just what I think I see. Some people say that they want to post every pen that they have, and some people, of course, then complain that when they post a big pen like a Parker Dull Fold, that doesn't post deeply, that it, it, it is back heavy and maybe the posting is not secure. Yeah, actually it is kind of secure, but the pen gets back heavy, as you see, and it's not comfortable because it's long. Yes, because it is a long pen and it is not made to be posted. So, should we insist in that? Another thing, I see lots of comments of people saying Parker to Fold is an awful pen because it is a cartridge converter pen. It should be a piston filler. Okay, that part you cannot change because if you know how to work with pens, maybe you can change and make a, a Parker do full the piston filler. But it's not a piston filler. Parker never had piston fillers. 
and I would say if I wanted a Parker dual fold, a Parker Centennial dual fold that was a piston filler, I would go for the Pelican 800 because the Pelican M800 is the same size as a Parker dual fold around the same price and it is a piston filler, so it is the equivalent. We should have one pen and complain about the characteristics or should we get the pen that we really want? Another thing that I see many times is people that get pens like this. This is the Moonman M1000. It has a shiny and steel section, so it may be slippery for some people. Some people try to... Um, how would I say? To sand this to make it a rougher uh, section, to be easier to, to hold. Does that make sense? I think it does, because it is your pen and you need to feel comfortable, but should you buy a pen that you know that will be slippery? If you didn't know, it makes sense to do it. If you didn't, maybe it makes sense also. <laughs> I, I'm really divided about this, I'm not sure. Another thing that sometimes I see like kind of an obsession is to get the pen like this Jinhao Dragon to get the pen and the first thing that some people do is to take the pen, remove the nib and change the nib to something else. And this is one of the few, very few cases where I did that and I changed, I'm not sure if I can align this now, and I changed the Jinhao nib for this Moonman nib because I think it looks nicer on this pen, just because of that. But there are some people that always want the pen to write differently and they want to have the other nibs. So if I prefer the nib from another pen, shouldn't I have bought the other pen? Or because the other pen, maybe the Moonman, is not available with this very flamboyant dragon design, I have the right to buy the pen with the dragon design and to put the nib that I want. Okay, I don't think these questions have an answer. And finally, there is something else that that one gets me a little bit crazy. Because people are fanatic with eyedroppering pens. Like if eyedroppering pens is the most evolved way of filling a pen. And it's not. I would say it is the most primitive way because you just open the pen, put ink inside and close it. Uh, and the pen then can burp if there is no uh, no valve to, to, to allow it to, to perform well. So it's not a good fill. That's why pens evolve and today most of them are cartridge fillers because the cartridge is kind of the easiest way to, to use a pen. And there are people that want to eyedropper every pen. There are people that I think will look at the Lamy Safari and say, oh, but it, and I read that. It's, I'm not uh, taking this out of my imagination. I saw people saying, oh, if the, it didn't have that hole, I could eyedropper it. But why? Why do we need to eyedropper every pen? Do, you, do we really need all that ink all the time? And should we complain because not every pen is eyedropperable? I'm not sure. The character of a Lamy Safari, it is a school pen. So it is not made to have huge amounts of ink inside. It's made to be used by young people at school that they just need to unscrew this, put a new cartridge, screw it back, and it is ready to write for a long time again. So, should we respect the character of the pen or should the pen adapt to our way of writing and to our preferences? Just a question. I'm not even sure if the answer is easy. I cannot answer to it because even in some of the examples I gave you, I am I am perfectly sure about some like these the eyedroppering. I don't think it makes sense at all. But for example, if you have a grip section that doesn't suit you, what do you do?
okay, just I, I just wanted your opinion. So, these were my thoughts for today. I wish you a very nice weekend and I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed another very long video that included pens and also a, type, a typewriter. So, I'll see you next video. Bye!